the new Boruto chapter is out, so I thought I'd give my thoughts about everything that's happened. And there was quite a bit to unfold, so let's start about how the chapter begins first before we get to all the juicy details at the end. So we learn about how Boruto was resurrected, which is funny because I thought Boruto wasn't actually dead, he was just on the brink of death, but it seems like Momo actually resurrected him, which is wild as hell. It seems that he used the remaining, what was it, 15%? No, it was 18%, excuse me. And thanks to that, we have Boruto alive again. So, it's interesting because Momo wasn't able to resurrect fully, thanks to the fact that he had to revive Boruto. So now he's kind of just trapped in there. However, it seems like the issue at hand, at least I thought it would be for like a brief second, is Momo's sudden appearances to control Boruto's body, because that happens quite frequently. And who's to say that Boruto can't do anything to counteract that the next time that he controls his body? I mean, he barely made it out alive when he tried to fight against Code. So it's, it's you know, really difficult for Boruto, or at least I thought at the moment, for him to really stay calm for anything to happen later on. But it seems that Boruto says that he can channel his power better now, which is interesting. I do wonder what would happen the next time Boruto gets in a situation where he has to fight against Code, or anybody. I mean, is he able to counteract anything Momo could do in the future? Or... Is he able to control Momo's power without having to go unconscious? I think that'll be something to really look out for next time Boruto's in a fight. But now moving on to Kawaki, he's unconscious. And they can't really restrain him after what he did last week. He'd be able to shrink himself down, plus, you know, he has karma again, so there's really nothing they can do. But, you know, like Shikamaru also said, his only wish is to protect the Hokage, which is, you know, Naruto. So, as long as that's something they're able to do, which it is, I mean, they'll have no issues with Kawaki whatsoever. But what I do like is that after that, Naruto's pretty happy that, you know, they can settle this peacefully without having to, you know, restrain Kawaki. But he did say he'd have a long talk with him after this, and I, I really want to see that conversation because, uh, you know, in case you forgot Naruto, he killed your son. So, I really want to know what Naruto would say to Kawaki because, shit, I, I'd have a lot to say to him if, you know, he killed my son. But anyways, we uh, move on to Sasuke, and he has intel about Code's whereabouts, and he's in one of Boro's facilities, which is, interestingly enough, located in the Land of Snow, which is pretty cool, uh, you know, as everyone knows, if you're a Naruto fan, uh, the Land of Snow was a location in the first Naruto movie, but uh, they recently made a canon in the novels, and they brought it up here in the Boruto manga, so that's really cool. I don't remember if they actually mentioned the Land of Snow when we first saw that facility, you know, when Ada first showed up. But uh, the fact that they're bringing it up here is pretty cool. So anyways, uh, Sasuke mentions how there's, you know, inhuman rituals, human experimentations, and, you know, scientific ninja tools. All stuff that we pretty much already knew about. But uh, the most particularly interesting thing that Sasuke had to bring up was the fact that they had cyborgs. Which is really interesting because they didn't know that. And we as the audience recently learned about that. So Shikamaru obviously thinks that that's pretty sketchy. So, now he wants to know if there's actually any definitive proof that Code is there, while well, Sasuke isn't able to say whether he is or not, but he does mention that Bug is there, so that's like everything you can really relate to Shikamaru. But then Sasuke brings up how he heard about everything that's happened, and Shikamaru responds by saying, yeah, he, he killed Boruto. Even if it was a means to stop Momoshiki, he did it right in front of me and Naruto. Thankfully, Boruto turned out to be okay, but... The only ones who know about it are Ino, Sai, Amato, and Karasuke. We're still deciding how to move forward. Then Sasuke asks where Boruto's at, and then Shikamaru responds by saying he should be with his friends, including Sarada, so go see him. Then we pan back to the Land of Snow with... Oh, this part, where Ada pretty much just calls out code, and she's like, Be thankful. Your precious ten tail sacrifice, Boruto is still alive. He was revived using Momoshiki's karma... And then Code's like, revived? Are you serious? And then afterwards, more along the way, it seems that the rest of Karma's compressed data has been extracted, meaning that Boruto is fully Ototuki now. And then somehow they shared an exchange that I can't directly see with my Senrigan clairvoyance. I wonder if he's able to communicate with Momoshiki on a, some sort of spiritual plane. Unforeseen would be an understatement, but I'll take that piece of good fortune. Guess it was meant to be. And then Ada just gives him a look. You're lucky that Boruto's still alive, but I'm honestly fed up with the multiple grandstanding acts that you displayed. Damn, it's bad enough that the fandom's hitting on code, but Ada too? Oof. 
You took it too far, especially using my little brother without my permission. And then Code is like, I don't really have any other option, did I? Then Ada's like, listen, your job is to bring Kawaki to me, and in return, I'll help you regain your power and your own goals. Since you're useless to me, the way you are right now. However, if I determine that even after you gain your strength, you're still useless, incompetent, or simply just a hindrance, we siblings have absolutely no qualms about disposing of you. Consider yourself warned. Well, she said it. Gotta watch out next time, Code. <laughs> and he responds by saying, you mean we're not even comrades? How sad. And that's business for you. If you don't produce results, you'll lose even this sad relationship. Yeah, Code, you have nothing. And then he responds by saying, did I not mention that I already took measures? And this is the part that really got me. So we see that Code actually left one of his marks. And on Shikamaru of all things. And I was like, Shikamaru, no, how do you not notice it? And this is me in the middle of reading it, right? I, I you know, I, that's just me in my head. I, I didn't finish a chapter. I was like right in the middle of reading it. I had stopped right here and really thought to myself, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that Shikamaru doesn't notice that thing on his neck. But then moving forward with that, we see that Shikamaru has a nice little talk with Amato. And I was like, man, he has a, he must have a lot to say. And then, you know, Amato's like, it sounds far-fetched at first, but the proof is in the pudding. The blood analysis aligns with his explanation. And then Shikamaru's like, and Momoshiki, can we definitely, definitively say that he can't resurrect anymore? And then Amato's like, yeah, it is 100% impossible. Shikamaru's like, good, that's great, actually. By the way, and then he just grabs his shirt and he's like hey what the and obviously Shikamaru is really mad about Kawaki having his uh, his karma back and then we move on to Boruto and then everyone's like all of his friends are just looking at him and trying to see if he's fine and you know not hurting or anything and then yeah Boruto's like it's pretty close and then Miski being the observant type he's like question why would Cold try to kill you when he wanted to feed you alive to the Tentails and then Boruto's like, uh, well, you see, so, you know. And Shikamaru's like, yeah, don't, don't, don't tell him anything. Don't tell him that you died. Just mention nothing. And then Boruto's like, yeah, maybe he couldn't control himself. Didn't seem like he thinks too far ahead. But yeah, Serata was like, either way, you've become fully a Suzuki, right? Are you going to be all out targeted now? And he's like, yeah, probably. I don't know where he's hiding, but I won't let him escape next time. And then Serata's like, no, that's not what I meant. I'm saying you need to be extra careful. What if you're attacked when you're by yourself? Then Sasuke shows up and he's like, yep, she's right. He can appear unexpectedly. Don't go anywhere alone, even within the village. And this also includes Kawaki. Now that he has Karma back, Code won't stop at it, you know, at nothing to get his limiters removed. Which means that his first target will be Old Man Amato. Then we continue to see Shikamaru just talk to Amato. Well, I guess talk is a strong word. He has him in a corner and he's like, you restored Kawaki's karma and planted it on your own without his consent, no less. Why? And he's like, it's simple. He fundamentally loathes karma. I probably wouldn't get his consent, and yet he desired power. Enough to protect Lord Hokage and chase off enemies. But yeah, after a back and forth, we actually see, a few panels later, Code reappears and shows up out of nowhere. And he's like, sorry to interrupt, but I didn't want to waste this prime opportunity. And I'm here thinking to myself, there is no way Shikamaru allowed this to happen. That is just a huge blunder on his part. And as I'm thinking that, I'm continuing to read... Code just manages to land a hit on Shikamaru, with Ada saying, you fool, the conversation was just getting interesting. Then, boom, just Shikamaru hitting the wall. I was like, this is this is just so unusual. I, I just couldn't believe Shikamaru could just fall for that so easily. Then we get Code, and he just grabs a hold of Amato, and he's like, it's been a while. You ought to worry about your own welfare. Now he wants his limiters removed, and then Amato's like, I can't believe he showed up out of nowhere. You'll be sensed right away, and an army of shinobi will be here soon. But Code knows that getting rid of the limiters would only take a few seconds, so he's not concerned at all. But, as this conversation is going on, Ino notices that Code has arrived in the village, and then Shikamaru's on the you know, ground trying to stand back up, and he's like, yeah, he's here, right in front of me. Then Ino's trying to summon some shinobi to arrive on the scene, but he only wants Naruto and a few others to know about it. He doesn't want anyone else there. And I was like, damn, Shikamaru was really trying to uh, think about what to do now. And then, you know, Ino follows his command, and then suddenly we see his shadow possession jutsu. And he manages to get a hold of Code, and he's like, oh, it's useless. I can move my fingertips enough to slash this Korotid open. And he's, you know, still trying to talk to Amato. 
And then this part. I love this part. This, this, this is what I wanted to see. Shikamaru says, you thought I wouldn't notice the claw mark on the back of my neck? That I'd fall for such a transparent trap? I was like, that's it. That's the Shikamaru I know right there. And then this caught me off guard. We see the, what looked like a pod just laying around there. And then boom, it opens up. And Shikamaru's like, it's showtime. Wake up, Bronco. And I was like, Bronco. And then boom, Delta appears. I was like, oh, sh I, I, okay. I knew, I knew Amato was working on something. I, I likely thought it was like a cyborg or, you know, an android. Something to help the Leaf. I knew this was something that he was doing. And I think most of the fandom did as well. It was so obvious that he was working on something like this. But I didn't think he'd work on Delta. Or, well, rework her like this. Yeah, Shikamaru says she's a new model. Reprogrammed to be a battle asset that protects Konoha. And he's like, Delta, your target is Code. He's the enemy of Konoha. And he's and then she's like, I know, shut up already. Don't keep screeching like a darn fool. Then we see Delta fight against Code again. That This actually blows my mind. I thought we'd get like an entirely new cyborg. And then Delta shows up again. And I, I guess it was obvious that we would see Delta appear again because if you see the anime, Code just shuts Delta down and she's just laying flat into the ground in their hideout. So I, I knew that she would come back in like some form or another. I just never imagined it'd be like this. I just I, I just can't believe it. But it's still cool. I like the fact that Delta is now an ally to the Leaf. It'll be kind of awkward to have her be next to Naruto. It's going to, you know be very very awkward considering the beatdown he gave her last time but uh that aside this you know still pretty cool but uh then as the fight continues we see delta continue to try to get her hands on code we see that code uses another mark and i was like oh he's trying to get away and you know shikamaru has the same response and then code he's like escape quite the opposite actually and then oh my god ada ada actually shows up in the leaf i this is what I thought would happen last chapter, but she's actually there in the in the presence of Shikamaru and Amato. That's actually huge. This is like making me wonder what's gonna happen next because, as you know, you all remember, Ada's ability is that she's able to you know make any man, women, or just you know anyone in general become immediately infatuated with her. You know, they they just fall in love with her and they pretty much just do whatever she wants. You know, obviously, that doesn't work with the Yozuzuki, so that's why she's, you know, interested in Kawaki and Boruto. And, you know, now that she's there, is she, is she going to be able to, you know, just let Shikamaru and Amato, I guess, become infatuated with her? Are they going to let her do whatever she wants? And, you know, that also applies to everyone else there. Well, you know, what about Naruto, Sasuke? She's basically able to make them her puppets, and she's able to do whatever she wants. And then, yeah, we have the chapter end with... You know, Amato's like, oh, it, it's Ada. And then, boom, that's just, that's how the chapter ends. This, this was a really, really good chapter. I actually, you know, at first that was a bit iffy. I was like, oh, man, where, where is this going? But shh, the fact that Ada herself shows up, the fact that Code managed to successfully re-enter the village one chapter after he left, I didn't think would happen this soon. This all happened so fast, and, and I, I liked it a lot. This is This is great. Uh, it's such a pain that this is a monthly, but uh, oh, I, I'm really excited for the next chapter. Anything can happen when it comes to Ada. She she can basically do whatever th she wants here. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I really want to know what Shikamaru is going to do. I don't think he's, you know, really prepared for anything that Ada can do. It, it's going to be really difficult for him. And same with Amato. I, is Amato even capable of being infatuated with her? I mean, he was the one that gave her the upgrades. I, I do wonder if he just went overboard and made himself be able to be affected as well. I mean, it'd suck if he didn't have any countermeasures against it. I mean, I'm going to assume he doesn't. But, uh, yeah, this chapter was really good. And I'm actually really, really excited for the next one. I cannot wait. But, yeah, uh, uh, like I said, had a lot of fun reading this chapter. I think it was good overall. I don't think there was any issues with it whatsoever. It, it went really quickly. I had probably the most fun I had reading this in a while when it comes to Boruto. And that's not to say that I don't enjoy reading Boruto. I, I, I always enjoy uh, reading it. I watch the anime every week. And I know not everyone does it because a lot of them find it really un uninteresting. But, you know, I, I really enjoy the anime. Despite, you know, a lot of other people thinking it's pretty lame or just not interesting. I, I, I find it fun. Especially the arc we're in. It, it's cool. Especially seeing Kawaki go on missions. I like that. But, you know, th that aside, 
this chapter really got me hooked, especially at the end. Oh my god, everything was just going just rapidly. You know, me thinking that Shikamaru made a huge mistake, only for this to actually be a plan of his to lure Code in. I just thought that was really well done. And I guess, shame on me for thinking that Shikamaru wouldn't have a plan in place. I mean, he had the marker on his neck. There's no way he wouldn't have noticed that. So he, he thought of everything so perfectly. I just, I, I love it. But, uh, yeah. That's pretty much everything I have to say about it. I like the chapter. I liked it a lot. But, uh, what did you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? You know, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, he's looking forward to the next chapter. I'm really excited. And I'll definitely do a discussion video for that when it's out. Hopefully a bit sooner, because I know this is a bit, uh, late. But, uh, I don't think anybody would mind. But, yeah. Until the next Boruto chapter comes out, uh, peace out, everyone. Take care.